Welcome to the 33rd video on beginning CSS. Today we're going to look at how to float an element. And what we're going to do is we're going to float this div1 block element right here and this div2 block element. But before we do that, let's talk about the flow again. And remember, I touched upon that subject a few videos ago. And remember, if we don't put any widths in our elements, the browser will paint those automatically from left to right. And that's called the flow. It's a very natural thing. So the first one gets painted right here. Then there's a line break. And then the second element gets painted. And then as we see, there's some paragraph elements within this block element. Everything's a nice and natural flow. Now we're going to interrupt that and float these two elements. So essentially what we're doing is we're overriding the browser, if you want to think of it like that, and we're telling the browser where we want to place the element. Now let's go ahead and float the first element. Now in order to float an element, the first rule is that you need to give the element a width. If you don't give it a width, well then the browser is just going to go ahead and expand that out itself. The browser does all the work. So let's do that in the first div here and we'll put in a width of let's make it 300 pixels and then we're going to use the float property of course and we will float this left and so let's go ahead and save this and let's refresh this and you can see now this is pinned to the left and that's the nice thing about floating an element you can pin it to the left now this other element here is getting rendered because it's next on the list and it's going to fill up this space and this is being done by the browser. We haven't actually put in a width or float here so the browser is actually doing this for us. And so now let's go ahead and pin div2 to the right. And so we'll just copy and paste this and we'll give it the same pixel count only we're going to go ahead and float this to the right and we'll save this and there you see. Now I'll explain why this element here just took up the center space and uh, this will actually correspond to how the flow works with floated elements. So now you can see we've got the div2 to the right and the div1 to the left. Now one thing this allows you to do is put block elements side by side. Remember that won't happen if we let the browser paint it for us. In other words, if we use the flow. So that's one thing floating allows you to do. It allows you to put block elements side by side. And it also allows you to always keep an element pinned to the left side and an element always pinned to the right side. It will always be there no matter what. So if we, you know, if we resize this, you can see it always stays pinned to the left. Now the first question you might be asking is, well, why did the browser put this header block element, which we didn't float by the way, this is still in the flow if we want to call it that. And you might be asking, well, why is this here? And the answer to that is, think of it this way. When you float an element, you are interrupting the flow. And so think of it almost like the browser doesn't even really know about it. It's almost like he's going to paint this header element and then this space right here is between this header one element and this header two. These two, the div one and the div two are outside the flow now. So he only really knows about the header two. So he's naturally gonna go ahead and paint this between these two elements. Now, sometimes you may want that effect, and we will get into that when we do the CSS layout series. And actually, in this video, I don't want you to worry about coding. We're going to be floating elements when we get to the CSS layout series. I just wanted you to understand how to code it and the concept. Now, one way to get this back down here is to put a percentage in here. And let's put in 50%, and I will show you what happens. And then let's just go ahead and put this in the other div as well and let's save this let's hit refresh and there you can see now what this did was we said hey take up 50 percent of the page in terms of width and we did that for the div 2 element as well and so this element now is pushed down here but you'll notice there's no line break here because once again these two elements are outside the flow so the browser won't put in that line break the line break he only really knows about the header one element so he puts a line break here there is no div1 and div2 element. We are in control of those elements with the flow. Now, a couple more points before we close this video. You will also notice that the paragraph elements inside the floated elements also size appropriately. In other words, they size appropriately to the size of the now floated element. So just remember that when you float an element, it's no longer part of the flow. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. I will see you guys in the next video.